everybody welcome back to another video in today's video i'm going to talk about imposter syndrome and some of the strategies that i have used to navigate through the imposter syndrome specifically the times when it has really messed up with my brain and uh, and things that actually helped me pass through those phases a lot of you have been requesting this video i have a content request form video request form where i have had so many requests on this topic I honestly was not planning to record this, but since so many of you want me to talk about it, I will talk about it. I did have my fair share of imposter syndrome. For those of you who are not aware with my journey, I am actually a first generation immigrant, first generation graduate, first female in my family to be working in the corporate world. And English is my second language. I struggled quite a bit with English and to be sitting here on a, in front of a camera and talking to a camera in English, like I'm telling you, <laughs> that imposter syndrome is like part of me everywhere. So, um, so like, yeah, let's talk about it. That's pretty much about my background. Like there's a lot of firsts in my journey, which led to me feeling like an imposter and before I talk a little bit more about it let me tell you what is the definition of imposter syndrome so according to Google imposter syndrome is loosely defined as doubting your abilities and feeling like a fraud it affects high achieving people who find it difficult to accept their accomplishment so pretty much what I said being the first in many things it's very hard for me to sometimes wrap my head around where I am sitting right now not that I'm so it's very sometimes it's very hard for me to wrap my head around that I'm currently working at one of the biggest tech companies at in the sexiest job family of 21st century. Imposter syndrome has been part of my journey for a very long time and the first time I initially didn't know that this is what imposter syndrome is and the first time I actually experienced it is when I started my first job right out of college and that was me working at, uh, at Amazon and I did my internship there. I have talked about it in some of my previous videos that I was an intern there. I went to community college then I went to University of Washington and in my internship I my peers were the other interns were people from Harvard Stanford all these Ivy League schools and there I was who was like from a community college slash University of Washington which is a pretty good school definitely a topic for another video of how I made it through from a community college to UW to Amazon but yeah so there was a lot of peer pressure oh so that's when like I started feeling that wow do I even belong to be here did I just get lucky or what was it that made me here and honestly it really eats you up it makes you you lose confidence and other people and it shows up in your work and it shows up in your body language and it it shows up in your communication and it does take over at some point where you're like wow how did I even end up here why like I don't deserve to be here so for me that was the case like and on top of it when I started working full-time I was the only female in my team at that time and that even added on top of it and where I am from there are not many women who actually get to work in a corporate environment so on my floor in my building I was basically the only woman of that ethnicity and that made me even wonder even more there was one time I was actually I had to do this big presentation and I had given that presentation I used to do a lot of trainings on uh, a b testing and experimentation company-wide trainings and every before every training I would over prepare I would spend hours rehearsing and stuff but there was this one time when I totally forgot that I have a training and I realized that I have, I have to give a training 30 minutes before the meeting and I was just freaking out because I hadn't done the extra step of preparing and rehearsing. And I was doubting myself, but I also forgot that I have given this training like dozens of times before, and I'm gonna be okay if I don't do over-prepare. Yes, imposter syndrome does lead you to over-prepare, overwork, and things like that. And I tend to be a perfectionist because of that, because if I'm not doing something perfectly, I am 100% doubting myself because imposter syndrome. Anyways, I went into that training doubting myself, but eventually something clicked and I was able to deliver very good training. And I hadn't put in that extra work that I typically did in previous trainings. And that made me realize that actually I am pretty good at my job. I'm pretty good at what I do. And the whole rehearsal, the whole planning and all of that was just like all in my head. And it was the imposter syndrome that was making me do it. So I don't know if any of you can relate, but I think people who experience the imposter syndrome tend to overdo, tend to be perfectionist, tend to be perfect in every aspect possible, tend to overwork, tend to do a lot of things and go above and beyond in delivering because they want to prove it to themselves that they belong, they deserve to be here. So anyways, that was my first few years 
in the industry when I was experiencing the imposter syndrome. A lot of people that I work with, super smart, had family members who have been working in tech, who have been working in these amazing companies for a very long time. They had their paths paved out. Whereas me, who I don't know how, but ended up, <laughs> actually, I do know how, I did work hard for it. Who does not, was not meant to be there, is there. So a couple of things that were specifically helpful that helped me feel more comfortable with my accomplishment was um, I started getting involved with a lot of people. I started networking and I started meeting people who are accomplished, but they also look like me. They also had similar struggles as me. And when I saw those people, when I networked with those people, when I got to meet them and talk to them, I actually realized that if they can do it, so can I. And that was a big thing for me. As I said, like I'm the first in my family to be working in the corporate world. So I'm not typically surrounded by people who are accomplished in the manner that I am. And so for me, it was very, very important to surround myself with the people who come from similar background and have had similar struggles. And they're doing, they're kicking ass. They're doing amazing in their roles, in their fields, in their career, because looking at them, watching them, it's, it gave me confidence that if they can do it, so can I. So that was like my number one thing that I did to manage my imposter syndrome. I definitely started feeling less of an imposter after I had people in my circle who have been doing amazing work um, and come from disadvantaged backgrounds such as mine. The second thing I did is I took this workshop called I Am Remarkable and I'm actually one of the leads with it. It's a Google workshop, but it's available to everybody in public. Um, everybody who anyone can take that workshop. It's called the I Am Remarkable workshop and I actually accidentally took that workshop. I did not plan it out. And that workshop basically changed my perspective into how I view my accomplishment. And some of the practical things that I started doing is I started writing down. Every time I would accomplish something, I would write it down. Um, because when I have a log of things that I have accomplished and on days that I either underperformed or was rejected or did something that I that was like under my expectation or they did something that was not qualified to be a good project, qualified to be a good delivery. And on days when I would feel down and I would feel like an imposter, I would look at that log and I would remind myself that look at this on this, you did this, you deserve to be here. And it's okay if you this one thing that you did was not 100% perfect but look at you it's it's totally okay like look at all these accomplishments so in in addition to that i also started logging my failures as well as my rejections because when i have a log of my failures my accomplishments and when i look at it together it one keeps me grounded second it reminds me that a rejection it's okay i have had these before and i have been okay i've been able to come out of it so um, that was like writing down um, was very, very helpful for me. I actually used my website for this. Um, on my website, I have a page about me section. On that page, I actually started writing down every time I would give a talk, every time I would um, accomplish, I would get an award or every time I would get do something great that was worth calling out, I would, I would, I would log it and I would write it down and I would keep a journal. If you haven't tried something like this, I highly recommend you to keep a journal. and. Take the workshop, like I am remarkable workshop. It's free, uh, it's a two hour workshop. There might be a wait list, but just just Google it, uh, I am remarkable, or I'm gonna link it in the description. Um, that workshop was super, super beneficial for me. I'm actually a facilitator for the workshop and I do give workshops. Maybe I'll do one for all of you. Who knows, I used to do that for my people, my IG fam, my Instagram fam. Uh, I haven't done that in a while, so maybe I'll do one for my YouTube fam because that workshop was truly wonderful um, and is specifically designed for people who come from disadvantaged backgrounds and are either doubting their accomplishments or are not vocally speaking about their accomplishment. So that was the second thing that I did. The third thing, yeah, I actually wrote a blog on this a few years ago. That was well accepted and that was shared by a lot of people. Um, I, I know like specifically it was extensively shared at Netflix because one of the, one of the people found my article through LinkedIn and then shared it internally and 
I got a lot of messages after that. Blog is called Five Strategies to Manage Imposter Syndrome. And if you Google search it, this is the first article that you'll see because it has done pretty well in the SEO. Um, so yeah, the and I do a detailed walkthrough of my experience. What is imposter syndrome? There was actually a study done in UK where they found that 85% of people, men and women, actually experience and feel imposter syndrome. But honestly, I wanna get this word out of my dictionary as soon as possible because I'm done feeling like a fraud. I deserve to be here. I belong here. I work really hard to be where I am. And that's the mindset that I want all of you to have. And doing the things such as like keeping a log of your accomplishment, keeping a log of your rejections is actually a great thing because it reminds you, especially days that you forget when you're feeling like an imposter, it reminds you that you actually worked hard to be here and you deserve to be here. So I highly, highly recommend to do that. Also like remind yourself that you actually did work hard to be here. It wasn't easy. Then another thing that I did, I started reminding myself that there is no such thing as perfect and I shouldn't be aiming to be perfect. It's okay if I did a project that was not 100% perfect. It's okay if I did not go above and beyond. So understanding that and understanding that perfection does not exist was very, very helpful for me to be okay with the average work delivery, uh, with the average performance. And so just wrap that around your head that you don't have to be perfect to be able to deserve what you have right now going on for you. And the last thing that has been super, super helpful, and spe this is specifically where I use social media to my advantage and build my support system, is I started celebrating small wins on my Instagram. And I use Instagram primarily for that because I found a lot of like-minded people. So let's say if I deliver, I give a talk, and I that's a small win. I will celebrate it. I'll put it on Instagram and I'll be like, hey, I delivered this talk, blah, blah, blah. I'm so proud of myself and that was my and I had a lot of like-minded like people in my group who would encourage me and support me and basically cheer me up to continue doing that if I delivered on a project I would post it and basically that was my way of celebrating small wins and not wait for those big wins like a new job a new promotion because those things are once every few years and you cannot wait for those things to be reminded that you actually are accomplished and you're actually deserving. You need to be able to feel good about the work that you do. You need to celebrate those small wins because it can make a difference in how you feel and it can definitely shake off that imposter syndrome. It definitely does for me. It, every, every time I share an accomplishment, it gives me such a push, uh, such a confidence that I want to keep going and keep doing great things. Just to summarize everything, the, what I'm trying to say here is it's completely okay if you feel this way everybody feels this way but don't overthink it don't try to go into the rabbit hole that you don't deserve to be here you deserve to be here and you worked hard to be here remind yourself of all the hard work that you did to get here to where you are and just know that maybe if other people are not talking about it doesn't mean people around you are not talking about it doesn't mean that they don't feel like an imposter. Know that you are feeling this way, maybe the person sitting right next to you is also feeling this way. So don't think like you are a fraud, you're not. Another thing is, I think is also a mindset change. Instead of overcoming it, just figure out how to navigate through it. So by navigating through it, that what example I gave in the beginning where if I'm feeling like an imposter, I will recognize it, I would acknowledge it, and then I will put it on the side, and then I have, I'll keep going what I'm doing. I'll be like, okay, yeah, I'm feeling that way, fine. Me talking in front of the camera right now, talking to you right now, I'm like, who am I to talk about this? I'm gonna put that aside and I'm gonna talk in the camera anyway. So that's what I mean when I say, just acknowledge it. Instead of overcoming it, try to navigate it and do whatever makes you feel confident, whether that is like giving yourself a pep talk, whether reading through your journal of accomplishments and failures, or doing anything that makes you feel good about yourself. And celebrate each other, people around you. Um, if you find yourself, or if you find yourself around people who are feeling like an imposter, remind them that it's totally okay to feel this way, you also feel this way. Remind them of all the accomplishment and all the great work that they have done because it's that's how we all manage and navigate through it together. So those were some of my tips. I know I rambled <laughs> a lot, uh, but this is a very topic that is like close to my heart. And I hope whatever I share today is helpful for you, if specifically if you are struggling with the imposter syndrome. I don't know why it's even called imposter syndrome. It's just a feeling that 
everybody all humans literally have so it's okay if you feel that way just acknowledge it figure out what works for you and do those things and just keep going just don't stop that's all i wanted to say today thank you so much for watching i hope you're having a beautiful day that's all i wanted to say today and let me know in the comments if you have ever experienced imposter syndrome and how do you manage or navigate through it with that thank you so much for watching i hope you're having a beautiful day and i'll see you in the next video Bye.